She was the fearless one. She didn't just dance with the Prince of Wales, she pinched his bum. <laughs> Last year, she walked away from the Spice Girls. Why? Well, let's ask her. Welcome, please, Jerry Halliwell. <laughs> Very good, isn't it? It's like so... group therapy. <laughs> <laughs> God. My name's Jerry Halliwell and I left a band. <laughs> you did? Why do you leave the band? Um, do you know what? I, I knew you were going to ask me that yeah, question. Well, you're bound and to know I'd ask you that yesterday question. Yesterday I was sitting in my car and I was thinking, why, why? And Because I, I want to be as truthful as possible. And if I'm truthful, bluntly with myself, which is most importantly, um, there's a few things that you've got to bear in mind. One, it was eight months ago, and it's still quite tender in my heart. And um, so I don't actually know the full reasons. There's probably lots. And uh, it's the only way I can describe it. I'll tell you, what I can tell you is the events, and you, Dr. Parker, you tell me. Maybe you give me a cure. Um, I don't know about that. But well, <laughs> you know, I've got a bit of a history, as you know, we can cover, which, you know, makes me who I am. Maybe that can explain it. And, but what I can say, you know, the Spice Girls to me was like a marriage. It was a marriage where I fell in love completely, passionately. I needed it. You know, my father had died six months beforehand, so I was very militant, I was bossy. You know, I was adamant this was going to fill a massive void in me. And so the Spice Girls and I, we had this whirlwind romance. And, you know, what can I say? Like, one in three marriages these days, and we were babies when we started. I was the eldest, I was 22. Um, under the you know pressures of work schedules, you know that marriage it broke up, you know it imploded like, you know I'm I have to say I'm absolutely gutted it did, it, but oh, you know yeah. what what can I say it did, um, I would have liked it to come off to go on, yes. but I'm always a very instinctive person and something told me that I had to leave. Yes, you see I'm more interested in where you came from than than yeah. than, than, than where you were with the Spice Girls. Although that's fascinating because I mean when we were talking to Carol there about about background. I mean, you were really poor, weren't you? I mean, poor, poor. I was flea bag jumble cell kid, yeah. You jumble were. cell knickers, yeah. yes. I mean, Which wasn't good. No. I mean, in, 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 I mean, describe to me what it was like. I mean, what kind of kid were you? I mean, what sort of, sort of a, a child? What, what was the, the well, circumstances like? I, well, my father didn't work from the day I was born it that way but he was on one hand he was a you know he was a great man he was well read very political um, he was a dreamer very into literature and he gave me all of that which I'm very grateful for and on the other hand my mother you know she, she's Spanish very determined and and she she was always working she was my role model she you know example that I had so I had a real mixture I was the baby so, um, so I was fueled with confidence on one hand, but then I did feel very different from everybody else. Uh, for, you know, everyone else had lots more material things than, than I ever did. So sometimes I felt inadequate, and I was very small for my age. So I kind of put all escapism into, into movies, into Elvis, into, into music. That was my escapism, basically. And you wanted to be who? And what was the ambition when you were growing? What was um, the dream? You couldn't have an ambition coming from where you came from, that's it. it. I think I'm a product of media. You know, be rich and famous. You know, that is, if you're famous, suddenly the golden doors open and you're, you're going to be happy and that's it. So I was chasing this, obviously, something that's, you know, doesn't really exist. But, you know, that's what was my ticket. I was basically chasing a lottery ticket that I could control. Everyone, you know, buys a ticket every Wednesday, don't they? Yeah. You know, I was just chasing mine. Yeah. That's all. You, you, you worked in a variety of jobs. And, and, and you worked in a variety of jobs uh, at the same time, didn't you? Yes. And I how, did many, how many jobs did you have in one week? Well, I, did, I counted all in all the other day, and it's about 40 different kind of jobs. But um, before I met the Spice Girls, I, I was trying to put a demo tape together, which cost £300. And um, I was trying to be the new Betty Boo. And um, <laughs> anyway, so I had six jobs a week. I had two cleaning jobs, behind a bar, aerobics, selling knocked-off tag watches. <laughs> uh, you know, I was an artful dodger. You know, I'm a survivalist. And I was doing what I can, you know, could till I got there, basically. So you just had six different jobs. Oh yeah. 
totally. Uh, but I was on a mission. And, 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 and what about the, the, the time you had when you went to Turkey as a game show? Oh, did yeah, you, did I that had to learn that, that fridge. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, what but it was brilliant. I was, you know, you've got to understand, you know, I left home when I was 16 years old, like Dick Whittington, and, um, and when I was about 18, I decided to go back to college. I believe in education, absolutely. I think it's brilliant. And I went back with a different attitude, and I studied English, finance, marketing, and, and I was there because I wanted to be there. But I had to support myself. So I went out there, you know, during the mornings I was studying, and then I had to pay you know, my way. So I had to do things like I was a topless model, and which it was called glamour modeling, but it's not glamorous. <laughs> and, um, and I was the game show hostess in Turkey during, at the weekend. Well, tell us about both those things, but tell us about the game show hostess first of all. Um, I mean, what, I mean how, did you learn how to speak Turkish? Well, I did have to say the odd <laughs> word, and um, basically what I used to do was write it on my arm, then go, Ses bakalom. Or something like, you know, I didn't even know what I was saying, basically. And there was three doors, and people would, you know, win a booby prize or the car, and they had to choose it, and you had to stand there, and sometimes it was a chicken or a tyre. <laughs> but the funny thing was, they used to put me up in this hotel, and I used to think it was fantastic. I was earning a couple of hundred you know, pounds. I thought it was brilliant yeah. at the time. And the topless modelling, too. I mean, that would always come back to haunt you, won't it? It certainly yeah, came back to haunt yeah, me, sure. yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, you know, it was something I did. It wasn't something that I really wanted to do. It paid, you know, for me it was, you know, good money, but it isn't really. And um, I, I didn't do fantastic at it. I mean, the funny, the irony of it all, you know, um, these photographers, they've made, made a fortune out of it now. I mean, I've made Playboy. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, well, what can they, I they sold the pictures to Playboy. Oh, absolutely, they? yeah. And, I mean, you had no means of, of, of either stopping yeah. that or the making funny some money out of it. Yeah, the funny thing was, they'd want you to, you know, to get your top off and, you know, sh show your bottom. And, um, and then I'd be trying to get them at the end of it to do some pictures for my book and do something really arty. But, um, you know, <laughs> I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> they're not but, really after that, are they? No, no, they're not. Well, you're not the only one. But to be honest, it was boring. I found it very, very dull in the end. Standing there with a window open to keep your nipples firm was not good. <laughs> <laughs> so. Is that what they do? Yeah, they do. They oh, do. Tricks of the trade, do yeah. yeah. I do. <laughs> very handy. Very handy. You never know. Actually, maybe you could do when you're... <laughs> yeah. The thing like, no, not yeah. me. No, no, no. The older man. I oh, I told you, Parky, I find you very... Oh, happy. thank you, darling. <laughs> I was once Spunk of the Month in Australia. Oh, really? Sorry, yeah, yeah. But, uh, sorry, you, uh, Spunk of the, the Month. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, that it's that northern charm. No, no. It's that northern charm. Sorry. Spunk has a different meaning in Australia than it does here. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? You're I'm sure. sure. <laughs> Actually, you have got three children, haven't you? I have Very got three. Time. I have three. Got three. That, that's right. Where are we going to come and say? I know, I was only going to make a remark that, that, in fact, that the only, the only two people here among the four of us who have not taken their clothes off are uh, actually uh, Carol and myself, because Dawn done it too. She posted her Esquire, didn't you? I did, yes, did? I did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you stand by the windows when the wind comes no, in? No, no, no. Oh, uh, permanently uh, uh, erect. Permanently erect. <laughs> <laughs> Very liberating. <laughs> Very liberating. To make a demo disc. Uh -huh. Right, and then along come the Spice Girls. Yes. That's how it happened. Ba you know, we, there was an audition, and, and the funny thing was, I, um, I had another manager at the time, and, you know, quite a good one. And I thought, yeah, I'm carving this career, just starting it out. And then I met, this, you know, the other girls, and, but they had shit management. And I thought, what do I do? Do I go with this guy that's a good manager, or do I go with the girls, which I thought were fantastic. You know, I fell madly in love with them, with, you know, not so good management. And, um, and I remember asking someone into the record business, I said, what do you think I should do? He goes, girl band? Nah, never make it. And I thought, that's reverse psychology on me, thank you, I'll go with the band. <laughs> really? You know, you're wrong, you're wrong, absolutely, but, but, it's very instinctive. But you could have no idea that it would have taken off as the way it did take off. No, you couldn't. No. I think you know, we're very focused and, you know, we had, a, we had good gut instinct that it was going to work, really, and it was, you know, it was a tight thing together. But it changed, it must have changed your lives totally. And, oh, totally. Uh, well, what, what interests me is, is you know, the, the manner in which it changed you. I mean, how did it change you? You went from this, mo one moment, all of a sudden, you're this girl from Watford, this, this group yeah. of, of wannabes, and the next thing, you're this extraordinary phenomena. I mean, it's all over the world. But, because and you're it's... Like doll I bought you three times for my grandchildren, did dolls, you? you know. Did you play with them? Certainly. Okay. Um, <laughs> but, no, but, I mean, it's, it was, it's, it's been a remarkable story. It has, but the thing is, it's so fast. 
You've got to understand, really, we were only in the public eye two years. But, I mean, that's the state of consumerism. It's so fast, you know. And so you don't have time to digest it. You don't. You really so don't. It's a blur, is it, with you? It is, really. One minute I was, you know, pinching Prince Charles's ass, And the next <laughs> minute, you know, I was on a, on a boat in Cannes. You know, I was sitting in front of the telly the other day. And suddenly I thought, oh, my God, I print... I pinched Prince Charles's bum. I can't believe I'd done that. <laughs> I had well, what, what? It, 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 it wasn't bad. It wasn't <laughs> bad, I have to say. And, you know, actually, one thing I would like to say is for those, you know, Jerry Halliwell is here, but um, Ginger is not dead. She's still alive, and she does come to surface now and again, and she will be back. But on the Prince Charles scene, on the court <laughs> report. On the Prince Charles theme, I mean, I mean yeah. that, wasn't, that was the first time. By way of introduction, you pinched his backside. Yeah. But then, of course, you actually went and you sang at his birthday. Yes, and I had a big learning experience from that. If anyone is suffering from constipation, <laughs> sing to Prince Charles, because I went 11 times in that big dress. <laughs> Not good, I have to say. <laughs> what I was thinking, I was, yeah, I think, imagine <laughs> I fell over. What would I do? What would I do? So I came to this plan that if I did fall over, I was just going to lie there and pretend to be dead. <laughs> <laughs> But never wake up. <laughs> so, but I've had a one hell of a year. Well, I, it's been a, um, it's been a, a disaster adventure movie. Did I tell you about my drowning in Uganda? Well, you, I was there with comic relief, and I, um, I was white water rafting, and I fell in the water. Uh, in, the, in the rapids, got sucked under for 20 seconds, oh. and I'm telling you, and then the boat turned over and was smacking on top of my head, and it was like a side of a fence. Beside him. Adventure, yeah, and I was like, Shelley Winters, and someone tried to save me, and I went, help me, help me. <laughs> it was just like, so there was that, and then from that, I went to uh, being, uh, going to the United Nations, and that was meant to be an educational visit, and suddenly he said, uh, no, you've got to speak to World Press, and I was like, oh, my God. And, um, what do you have to talk about to them? Well, basically, it was about contraception. All right. And what contraception are you using, Dr. Parker? <laughs> Well, it's, uh, it's about... <laughs> I won't put you on the spot. You're too young to have read Cosmopolitan 26 years ago. Okay. <laughs> I'll let you off. He's using the, uh, the pig's bladder method. <laughs> 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 it's called something now. So, no, basically, the, you know, I'm, I'm bringing awareness to um, plights of women in third world countries that are denied basic rights. I mean, there's facts like... 600,000 women die every year giving birth, which is ridiculous. We wouldn't put up with it in this country. And, you know, I think I have a duty to make people aware of that. I'm meant to be the advocate of girl power. Well, you know, I have to take it one step further. This is the empowerment of women. Does it mean anything, girl power, though? Oh, totally. Does to it? I mean, did it change anything? I totally... I put my hand on my heart and I believed in it. You put your hand on your mic there, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's still my beating heart. Yes, it so, is. But, but I mean, I, I mean, is it or is it just a phrase? I mean, does it does it work or, or what? I well, mean, it, it worked for me. I am living proof that if you put your mind to something and you feel strong, then then you can achieve anything. Sometimes you've just got to go for it and and believe. The power of the mind is everything. It, really, it doesn't have to be girl power. It's it's people power. It's strength within here. It's believing in yourself. That's, it's about self esteem. And let's have, you know, holding hands with everyone. <laughs> Actually, I've got a picture I've got an exclusive on, for everybody. Me, this is me. your well, um, late Christmas present. Um, well, anyway. after my hectic year, I went to New York to kind of escape a little bit, do a bit of shopping. But no, I was lying 8.30 in my bed in my nice flannelette pyjamas, and there is a bomb scare in my hotel. <laughs> and I have, they say, Madam, you have to get out of the hotel. So I'm standing in New oh, York isn't this in my this flannelette this pyjamas. <laughs> See that. So that's an exclusive that paparazzi did not get, see? It's really an initiative bringing my camera with me. I might go into journalism. My mum always used to make me take so fire escape pyjamas to university. Fire escape pyjamas. Fire escape pyjamas. Very lacy little green number just in case for that. I've, yeah. I've, I've, I've heard of them. Good I've job heard I wasn't going. underpants in case you get knocked yeah. down, but... <laughs> that's, that's, that's especially for you. That's, I'm, I'm more He's touched than I can tell you. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dennis. You're welcome. That's very nice indeed. Thoughtful present. You are, you are a thoughtful person, actually. Thank you. Now, um, <laughs> let's talk about the other thing, too. You were very, very um, 
outspoken on the business of the of the breast cancer campaign too, mm, weren't you? Totally. And I think that was probably the most uh, 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 inspirational thing that you, that, that you yeah, did in a sense. Totally. Um, do, what were the circumstances of you getting involved in that? I mean, you, you had a scare yourself when you were. Yes, when I you were was um, when I was 18 years old, and I was busy being a club dancer, and I had to pay my rent. I had a lump in my breast, and I thought, oh got to get rid of this. I knew that, you know, went to see the doctor and it got sorted, bingo, and I didn't think about it, you know. And then the Sun newspaper, how many years later, last year, asked, uh, they discovered it and start, decided to run the story. At that time, my accountant gave me this book um, by Ruth Picardy, oh, uh, yes. Before I Say Goodbye, and I swear sure. to you, I read this book and I cried mm. my eyes out. Sure, sure. And it made me realise how this is absolutely awful, the humility that she she wrote the book as well. You know, she had two kids, it was just... And I just was so... You knew when something really touches you, and I thought, my God, I have an absolutely absolute duty to do something about this. You see, my philosophy is, you know, we all blame society, that, but we are society. We have the power, you and I, to make a difference. And I have, in a, in a bigger way than most. I'm famous, so I can speak up about that, really. So if I can, if one person, you know, watching this, they've just said that, oh, then that's done something good. So I, I feel that life is just so much take, take, take. We've got to give a Back a little bit but, more. But you've, you've, you've pursued this, whatever it is you've been... You've been on the run ever since you were born, in a sense. I'm yeah. You're chasing after something. Or yeah. Right? yeah. I was always looking for something to make me feel better. And I'll tell you what, this certainly enriches my soul. Really the, that what, the, 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 the work that you do in the charity. Oh, right? yeah, totally. But, but yeah, but, but uh, you said something interesting when you were talking about being, being a spy school. You said you got to be this, this famous uh, and you found fame, but then it wasn't what you thought it might be. No. You so, I mean... So what was it? I mean, where did it fall short? I, you know, I'd like to say I don't discredit it, you know, what, what we achieved together. You know, I, I thank the Spice Girls and all the fans. But without them, I would not be sitting here. So I'm truly grateful. However, it was a massive learning experience for me. You know, spiritually, mentally, I, my mind grew 100 years, you know, in so many ways. And that was, I thought that was going to give me everything. And it's great. It does satisfy a piece of me, and I love it. But then there, there is more to life than that, you, of course. And it's natural that you're going to grow and, and want to find more fulfilling things as well as right. that. Right, OK. I mean, so basically it didn't fulfil you. But, but, but what's interesting then is to look at that, the aspect probably of, of, of that fame that didn't fulfil you. I mean, was there a, were there moments when you were, big, were this famous person, the Spice Girl, that sort of thing, where you actually thought, this is not really what I want at all? I've always wanted it, and I still want no. it. I lo you know, I love it, but um, I just... There was, you know, the day that I left the Spice Girls, um, and I wasn't planning to leave on that day, um, it made me check out my principles. Actually, I was meant to be in this studio doing the lot National Lottery, mm. and um, the schedule wouldn't permit me to do a breast cancer interview. And I thought, hold on a minute, I'm, okay. what are your principles? So I, I, had to, I had to question myself, what am I about? Where's your integrity? You know? So you did a breast cancer interview rather than... Well, you know, things got thing. very complicated, yeah. but... Yeah. You know, but that was the that is the reason why I left on that day. Yes. You know, I'm not saying that, that is the reason why I left the Spice Girls. There was never a good day to leave. That's the reason it was. I was going to leave in September. You know, and the girls so knew it, that oh, I'd pre-warned right. so them. So it just brought it forward a bit. But it brought forward. That's right. all. But this is, you know, it's one of those things. This was my personal decision, not to do with any of the girls, really. It, it was just something that I had to do spiritually, mentally, for my own growth. I really did. I, I felt like a hypocrite if I stayed. You know, I'm meant to be, you know, stand for girl power. Well, you know, it's not just about singing songs. It really isn't. Mm. So I had to do it. Okay. But now, I will be singing some songs soon. Well, I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, so I will. That, uh, my next question was to be there. Was it? I mm -hmm. beat you to it. I know you did. <laughs> so so well, you, you're working on a record on, on Rambo? Well, um, this I, year I put all my, you know, it's been a roller coaster of emotion. I thought I'm going to do something constructive and I poured it all into lyrics for my album. So just before Christmas, I sketched all the songs and I'm mastering them now. So what you're gonna have is this album that's totally schizophrenic, mood swings, <laughs> so every woman in Britain will identify with it. <laughs> you know, and I expect you to be dancing. There's some songs that you can dance around in your underpants too, <laughs> you know, and have good sex too, possibly. But as I am UN ambassador, you have to wear a condom. <laughs> <All right? laughs>
I'm glad Harry or Winsky had pyjamas in there. You can indeed. They are just, you know, so mm -hmm. more turn on. Uh, well, I've got no doubt you'll succeed. I mean, uh, oh, you never know. I might fall flat on my face, but you've got well, to you know, I, I mean, I think it's interesting. I mean, the three of you have achieved an awful lot in, 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 in your lives. And I mean, what, what is a single factor? Is it this curious thing called ambition? I mean, with you and Carol, it, it obviously is, but with you, Don, I mean, you seem to have no real ambition at all toward doing what you're doing now. No, it's <laughs> true. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's right, terrible actually, calamity really. Yeah, like. it's well, I don't even want to help Bent on any of it, I have no. to say. It, it was sort of by mistake. Yeah, that's right. But, but it does feel like natural, into it by it? mistake, but once you're in... Oh, but you were driven as well, weren't you? You'd be... I was driven into something, but yes. n not television. Yes. But, but then once I was in there, I thought, well, you know, I... I it's better than working, you thought this. Oh, I did. It is. It's just, you don't tell anybody. I still own the job. Yeah. And I did fall immediately in love with Richard Whiteley, of course. Well, oh, uh, who uh, is a sex god. Oh, hello, Richard. I've got to say to you. He, he, is, to he is irresistible, I've heard. <laughs> oh, yeah. How I, I could resist him. Could you? Yeah. How do you do? The, the other thing, I mean, the one thing you have in common, actually, is that you all wanted to be uh, members of a girl band, didn't you? <laughs> I've got a brilliant idea. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, that'd be wonderful, wouldn't it? Do not strike yes. any song up. And you can be backing singer. I can be backing singer. I don't want to be the or manager. Or a sexy little dancer at the front. Yes. What was yours called, the... Oh, well, we did the sugar lunch. The sugar lunch. Yeah, but that was yeah. the comic relief, which is ordinarily a very safe activity. Yeah. I hate to We don't drown everybody. No. Um, <laughs> but it was, but it was worth it. It made me grow. See, every time I'm nervous, I say, at least I'm not drowning in oh, Uganda. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, look, we're at the end, sadly, of our... Uh, oh, before we go, yes, you, go you promised something. You said that, um, and you have to stick to your word, that, you know, when you retire, yeah. you said that I could have your job, so I just wanted to... I didn't to say that. You <laughs> did, you did. I didn't and say that. you said that I would be... You would be my first interview, so can we get a question in? Hey, How you was it said you? that to me, too. <laughs> Okay. What's your game, buddy? Uh, <laughs> 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 All right, spunky. <laughs> 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 I'm going before it gets any worse. Yeah, yeah. I think we'll be the judge of whether you're spunk <laughs> or the monkey. <laughs> <laughs> in the bar later. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jerry Halliwell. <laughs> <laughs>